Hello. So today I want to talk about storytelling. Why do I like astrology? Why do I like astrology? I like it so much. I use it a lot. And why? Well, because it's a storytelling device. It's a language. And it's a language of uh, energy. And you identify energies uh, through their archetypes. Now, archetypes are like characters. And they're not just the character me, Julie, or you, Fred. They are the me, hmm, when I was a mommy, me, the mommy. What kind of a mommy was I? Or me, the daughter, what kind of a daughter was I? What kind of a mommy was for me there? You see, all these roles that are universal, those are the archetypes. Now, all the stories then are connected through the characters in the story. What does the character do? And why did that character do that particular action? And why was that dumb? Whoa, why'd you do that for, dummy? And you get to watch and watch it unfold, either for good or for bad or for whatever it comes out, right? Now, some of these lessons are universal and some of them are personal. And what I've come to know over time in my life is that um, all the difficulties of my life that I've had to deal with um, were confusing and uh, isolating and uh, confronting, not always fun. Um, so what happened was I searched and I searched and I searched and I searched for answers in psychology, which for a time was very gratifying. And then for a while I searched for answers in uh, anthropology. Is it, is it psychology, just me and my crazy brain and my goofy experience, or is it me within the context of society? That's what anthropology does. And not just society, then maybe it's, uh, like the deeper levels of anthropology, which is about culture, uh, well, culture, society, same thing, really, yeah. Okay, so you see where I'm going with this is like, there's always this balance between personal and interpersonal and then spiritual. Now, there's a shop in town called Mind, Body, Spirit, and I really love this shop because the title of it says my idea of Trinity, because that's who we are as we beings, and I'm talking about created beings so everything in three dimension so that's the rocks the trees the plants the people the animals we are all created are we created by um accident that's what philosophers do they talk about are we on accident are we on purpose blah blah, blah. so my idea over the years is that well if I learn enough different ways to tell the story, maybe it will help me ultimately to understand myself better and maybe be more fulfilled in my life. And so examination is required, as said Socrates. So when I examine my life, um, these days I look at it through the astrology lens. But I have discovered there are other esoteric stories that enhance the astrology story. And so then I have my Kabbalistic story. And what I use the, the, this tree of life for is really just a, a framework. Okay. Now, I, I hate to confess this because it's so personal. Except everyone's doing it, so I'm going to do it too. Neurodivergent. I, for me, I, I can't keep anything in my head. So, you know, I have friends that are like, oh, I'm getting old. I can't remember what I'm doing. And I just have to laugh and go, well, I've been, um, I've had it. I've had Alzheimer's since I was five. <laughs> I, I can't remember because my working memory, like the little um, tablet where you write your notes down in your head, I don't have one. It doesn't work. So when I learned just this year about neurodivergency and ADHD and all of these different labels, I went, oh, how's that going to fit into my astrology? Because I've spent many years rationalizing and retelling and storying and 
stacking and thinking and being and experimenting with all of these different possibilities for how to understand myself. So there it is. It's really interesting that all this stuff is converging together. Now, I am of a mind recently that I know people are going to kick my ass for this, but we're all neurodivergent. <laughs> we, we're we just, you know, everybody has their own way of viewing. And I think it's just perspective. It's perspective. I mean, everyone's perspective is unique to themselves. And the whole thing about being in society and being in relationships is discovering the perspectives of other people and other situations. In doing so, I think that's how we learn to choose. Now, when I was young, I had a tremendously uh, elaborate victim story. And if you hear my story, you'll kind of be horrified because <laughs> there were, you know, it was really benign horror, uh, a story of neglect and abandonment and uh, isolation. It's sad. It's like I said. So anyway, but what have I come to over the years is that um, the isolation of the saint. So I have come into myself not saying, oh, I'm a saint. I'm your guru. But I'm saying I am my own savior. I am the savior of myself. I have discovered a level of storytelling that has helped me facilitate a life purpose. And I think everyone agrees that meaning and purpose are probably the most important factors in happiness and a life. And you know, it seems to me that with that's true, that it would become obvious that the reason that some people just get these ideas and they just insist that they're correct is because they want so dearly for their purpose to have meaning. And they feel that if someone else recognizes the meaning in their purpose, that they'll, that they'll be satisfied, they'll be vindicated. And then the truth is that doesn't happen like that. It has to be meaningful to you and it has to be poignant and touching enough that you feel like you authored it. And now there's brain science saying, oh, we don't author ourselves. I just watched one on, on uh, Nova that, you know, the brain is doing its own thing and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I have more to say about that. But point being, if you choose to believe that you are having an experience created from your unique perspective and that you can give it meaning and that you can elevate it from being desperate to being heartfelt, to being realized and that you go through those steps of awareness and then all of a sudden you can find a place in the world where you feel as if you belong and that you can make change and you can make beauty and you can make because we like making. All right. So, oh, one more thing. So we like making. And so what does that mean about AI? And then AI is like, you don't have to make anything. You just push buttons. <laughs> Monkeys. That's why AI is not going to be the end all be all. We've got 20 years of Pluto transiting. Uh, Aquarius, which means that there's going to be a lot of tech just like pouring in. But, you know, in the long run, it's just going to fizzle. Either that or someone just pull the damn plug out. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? It's like, eh, just roll with it. And know that there is no AI without a body. There is no electro without magnetic. We are an electromagnetic being in an electromagnetic universe. So if you want to call electro and magnetic the two gods, that's what I do. And they create this one mixture. And this mixture cannot be separated. When you make a smoothie, you cannot remove the banana out of it and have it look like a banana ever again. So 
do a smoothie. All right, that's my comment for today. Love you, bye.